So topic of this video is to introduce you to the idea of entropy. Entropy is the other factor that is going to help control spontaneity of chemical reactions. Um, so entropy was coined um, by the man named Rudolf Clausius um, in the early 19th century. It is given the symbol S. So capital S stands for entropy. That's the variable. Um, uh, he was convinced that um, there was a, a significance to the ratio of heat delivered, so if the process were reversible, um, to temperature. So entropy is really a measure of the amount of heat um, divided by, of a reversible process divided by temperature. Um, entropy in the easiest sense can be thought of a measure of randomness or disorder, but it's actually a little more complicated than that, but that's how we think of it. Randomness or disorder. The more random something is, the higher entropy it has. Um, it's actually related to the various modes of motion in molecules and the energy that's distributed to these different modes. Um, so we'll talk about what does that look like in terms of molecular behavior. All right, so um, for a process that occurs at constant temperature, so for an isothermic pro isothermal process, um, like I said, the, the value of entropy or the change in entropy is equal to um, the heat that's transferred when a process is carried out reversibly um, divided by the temperature at which that process is carried out. There is a really nice explanation um, in your textbook about the idea of entropy and how it's derived. So I'm going to suggest that you take a look at that. Um, I also have some additional videos on linked on the website that you can take a look at that talks about entropy. One of them is from Bozeman Science, and again, he does a very nice job explaining entropy. Um, so like total energy and enthalpy, entropy is a state function. It doesn't matter the pathway that you use to get there. It only matters where you start and where you finish. So we can, like we did in the past, say that the total change in entropy is equal to where you started minus, or where you ended minus where you started, final minus initial. So entropy actually leads us into the second law of thermodynamics. Um, basically, it says that the entropy of the universe does not change in a reversible process, and it increases for a spontaneous process. Okay, so for a reversible process, delta S is zero. For a spontaneous process, delta S is positive. It's changing, it's increasing. Um, so disorder increases in a spontaneous process. Basically what that says is the world's just getting more messed up all the time. All right, so here's equation-wise what we just said. So for a reversible process, again, an ideal process, the delta S of the universe is zero. The change in entropy of the system is um, equal but opposite to the change in entropy of the surroundings, so you wind up with no change in the universe. But in the real world, for processes that are irreversible, which is what happens most of the time, you actually get an increase in the entropy. Um, you get more disorder in a, in, a, in a real or spontaneous process. So the entropy of the universe, it increases, um, but entropy can decrease for individual systems. So that's really important to remember. So the system may decrease in entropy, but that just means that, in spon that there's some sort of spontaneous process somewhere else for which entropy is happening at a more positive value. 
All right, so molecular interpretation of entropy. Um, you, your textbook is really good with this chapter. So again, I'm going to refer you to a page um, in your textbook, page 822, um, and use figure 19.6. Look at that picture and think about what it is that that, uh, that page is telling you. Um, but basically, what we want to take a look at is something that um, Ludwig Boltzmann came up with. Um, he described the concept of entropy at the molecular level. So one thing is you need to remember that molecules can move in very different ways. So temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. Um, and according to the kinetic molecular theory, that molecular um, that average kinetic energy is proportional to the molecular motion. So the more temperature you have, the more kinetic energy you have, the more motion you have. The more motion you have, the higher your entropy can be. So more temperature, more kinetic energy, more motion. So now let's review the types of motions that you can have. Translational motion is what only happens in gases, where you have movement of the entire molecule from one place to another. Vibrational motion is when you have um, periodic motion of atoms within the molecule. So you have stretching of bonds and um, movement of the atoms, rotating. Um, no, that's rotational motion. <laughs> okay, translational, vibrational, rotational kind of did these in reverse order. Vibrational is kind of the most limited um, type of motion, um, vibrating of the bond, stretching of the bond, shortening of the bond, changing of an angle of a bond. And then rotational motion is basically the movement of molecules around an axis, um, axis or rotation around a, a, a pi bond. So if you have a single bond, you can rotate um, the atom at one end or the other, or both. So vibrational motion can be any sort of motion like this. You can have an unequal vibration. You can have an angle changing vibration. You can have just the length of the bond changing. All those are considered vibrational. Rotational, really, you just have spinning of an atom um, or spinning of the molecule. You could have spinning of the entire molecule, um, or you just have spinning of one of the, the bonds. Um, so Boltzmann came up with the idea that each different position, each different motion, um, represents a different, what he referred to as microstate. And so if you were to take a snapshot of what the molecules are doing, basically what we're saying is that the more snapshots you can have that are unique, um, the more motion the molecule has, the more entropy the molecule has. Um, so again, you take a snapshot and the number of snapshots kind of gives you an idea of how many possible positions there are. Um, and then these different forms of motion are how the molecules are storing the energy. So again, like I said, he's referring to these snapshots as um, microstates. Um, each thermodynamic state has a specific number of microstates. So solid versus liquid versus gas, for example. And the number of microstates is given the variable capital W. And so what Boltzmann has proposed is that the entropy is equal to the natural log of the number of microstates times a constant. And the constant just happens to be what's referred to as the Boltzmann constant. That is in energy per Kelvin, energy per temperature. Because remember that S is Q divided by T. Q is energy. T is temperature in Kelvin. So the natural log of a specific number of things, there's no unit to a number of things. So the only unit that we really worry about is Boltzmann's constant. 
So again, entropy is a measure of how, how many microstates are associated with a particular macroscopic state, what we see on the outside. So what are the implications of the different numbers of microstates? The more particles you have, the more microstates you have, which means the greater entropy is. If you have a higher temperature, you have more motion, which means there's more energy states, which means there's more entropy. If you have less structure, a gas versus a solid, for example, solids have only vibrational motion, whereas gases have vibrational, rotational, and translational motion, you got many more microstates in a gas, and therefore you have a lot more entropy. So the number of microstates are therefore, um, or therefore the entropy tends to increase with increase in temperature, increase in volume for gases. You spread the gases out, there's more, or you give them more space, there's going to be more locations for them. Um, and the number of molecules, so the moles of things. You can also have entropy increase when you have more free motion. So as you go from um, a solid to a liquid to a gas, you have more free motion. In a solid, all of these IMFAs are present. You make a liquid, some of these IMFAs are broken, so you have more motion. You make a gas, every one of these IMFAs are broken. So many, many more chances for microstates. Um, taking a look at a solution, when you dissolve a solid, um, ions are going to have more entropy. You have more possible locations for those ions to be, as opposed to in the rigid structure of the crystal. But some water molecules actually lose entropy because they're going to be attracted to that ion and kind of stay in one particular location. But chances are, in most cases, you are increasing entropy as you make a solution. Um, so like I said, usually there's an overall increase in entropy. Um, the exception is for very highly charged ions where they're going to attract a whole lot of water molecules to them, you may actually wind up having a decrease in entropy, but that doesn't happen very often. Um, entropy changes. You're going to have an increase when you get gases formed from solids and liquids. That makes a lot of sense. Um, liquids or solutions are going to have higher entropy when you um, change them from a solid. And looking at the number of moles of things, especially gases, is going to increase entropy. If you, if you make more moles of things, that's more chances for increased numbers of microstates. So a couple of examples here. Hopefully we can get this done in the next two minutes. Um, here's some examples. So solid carbon going to gaseous carbon, so sublimation. Hopefully that's easy to figure out. Delta S is positive. You've got an increase in entropy. How about this one? I'm going from a solid and a gas just to a solid. That's a decrease in entropy. I'm going from more moles to fewer moles, plus all I have left is a solid. There's not much disorder left in the solid like we had in the gas. Um, here, I've taken HCl gas and ammonia gas to make ammonium chloride solid. I'm decreasing my number of moles, so hopefully you can see that delta S is going to be decreasing, less entropy. And then finally, I'm going from 3 moles all gases to 2 moles all gases. That will be an in decrease. That will be an increase in entropy. That should not be a negative, that should be a positive. Typo on my part, sorry about that. Um, so that's basically what entropy is. Um, I got a little bit more to talk about and I'm going to have to do it in a second video. Sorry.